this episode, episode five, is really complicated editorially. Even though some of those images flash by in, in just a fraction of a second, each, each of them was very carefully chosen. And the Mad King was probably the most dramatic of those because we've been hearing about the Mad King from the very beginning of the show, but he's never appeared on screen before. And shooting it, you know, spending a lot of time on what ended up being maybe like a second and a half, couple of seconds of screen time. I shot a lot of transitions, you know, off brand sand holding the vine the transatlantic route that gets him to wherever he goes it hints at this whole sort of almost paradoxical time intervention that bran can appear to do for better or worse <laughs> When I was doing the Arctic Wasteland, and I looked at that Night King in that makeup on his horse against that snowy, rocky landscape, I went, wow, this is really going to be fucking awesome. After we'd read, like, episode five and the huge sequence in the cave, we realized that logistically it was going to be a huge challenge. We had the Night King, uh, three white walkers, six children of the forest, and countless whites. When you're talking about eight hours of makeup and them having to come in at one in the morning to start their makeup to be on the set. I mean, it is an extraordinary thing that we ask of them, but then you see them all made up and it's like, okay, that, that was worth it. They're, you know, they're incredible. All right, one more. So on a normal day, so if I were to do a full body prosthetic, I'll get picked up at midnight and then I'll be on set by 10 a.m. So it takes about um, nine, ten hours. A design process for something like the characters, like the children of the forest, it's, it's quite a big procedure. We were looking at very earthy kind of references and um, tree barks and leaves, branches, the color palette as well being very green and ochres and browns. And it's very much a kind of a, a camouflage sort of palette as well. These lenses that we wear, they like cover half of our eyeballs. You have to look really fierce and you have to like give it this eye thing. It's such an epic journey just to get on set. The Lion and the Rose are one. I pledge undying love. The theater stuff was really fun for me to read, and I knew it was going to be a blast to work with the actors and the designers and create that. And to actually figure out with Deborah Riley, our brilliant production designer and the team, how do we base the look of this play in the universe of Game of Thrones and what would be appropriate then and still make it a little bit larger than life, a little ridiculous without being Saturday Night Live? Shut up, you it made sense that they would be talking about what the people at the center of Westeros were doing. It made sense that they would know who Cersei was, who Joffrey was, who Tyrion was. It made sense that they would get it completely wrong. The theater scene is just, it seems so joyous. It's something that um, is so different to the rest of the show. And we could use color. Blues next to yellows, next to greens, next to reds. It uses comedy. What's that mean? The whole feel of it is so different to everything else that it was an opportunity to really stretch our wings in another direction. So we're sort of following the camera. So we're yeah, following the line. camera and then we look yeah. here today. That sequence, conceptually, it was complex. Execution wise, it was complex. I don't rehearse and in terms of the acting, it was complex. Get run and run. The children of the forest have these round grenades that have been established in the show. And when they throw them, they ignite and light up in a certain way. And when they hit the ground, they explode. We had to orchestrate with our hundred extras as they were walking where the choreography of explosion one would be here, explosion two would be here, explosion three would be there, the Night King proceeds. 
Jonathan Freeman, my brilliant DP, is very much about interactive light. And if there's going to be an actor going by an explosion at night, we better see the effect of that light on him. Our special effects team. They had designed these flat panels of light that the actors and extras would walk by, and the light would light up from the ground. So the interactive light would hit. Then we did a pass with just the explosions. And now they're going to shoot some guys getting pulled on wire against green screen. So to make those images feel real, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of pre vising and practical shooting, and a lot of CGI. Making that with a bunch of people that are this talented, that to me is a real blessing. <laughs> The whites in the cave, a lot of them are going to be CG or what we call these sort of green screen whites. Like sort of a person performing it, but then we replace their arms and legs with, with CG pieces. On top of that, we have some of the whites crawling on the ceiling, which has to be shot in a completely different setup. Ceiling, but we're gonna shoot it upside down so guys are gonna actually crawl on the floor and then we're gonna turn the footage upside down so it makes it look like they're crawling on the ceiling. We're doing a lot of stuff in a tunnel, which we just run up and down, which we've been doing for about four days now, running up and down this tunnel. Excellent! So there's such tension and the stakes are so high. What are you doing? Go! We will build in horror and fright and action, always with the emotional through line of, oh my God, they've got to get out of there. I care desperately that they get out of there. It gets in the middle, the whites converge around her, she blows them up. Oh my God, Leaf is sacrificing herself for the greater good and for her friends to escape. Oh my God, no, not Hodor. Stop the wind and snow. My goal was to make it realistic, make it terrifying, and at the end of the day, with Hodor, make it his sacrifice incredibly moving. All right, Christian, you're breathing heavy. You've been running. And action. Turn around. And your friends say, pull the door. Pull the door. And look at that axe. And try to hold. that he uh, sacrificed himself for his friends. Fits very true to Hodor for me. Um, and I'm just thankful I got so far. You know, with so many people dying every year. That's a, a serious rap shot for Mr. Hodor. But it's really sad. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> And that scene with Mira dragging and the blizzard, she's like Diane Keaton in Reds crossing the frozen tundra, which was my image. I said, I really want it so blizzardy and cold and this little girl and this sled and she finally just breaks down. She can't do it anymore. Today is about saving Bratton, essentially, saving the profit. One more rehearsal, guys. Once you've taken your hit, you're on your back, you've rolled over, we'll probably have about four seconds of you doing that if you're still acting, and then we'll come in and put you out. Three, two, one, action! Wire work is um, ways of motivating people through the air or assisting them to jump down off something or to safety them or to propel them through a space. Nothing is going to get between that kid and me. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm one bad motherfucker. Come with me. Seeing his uncle again and seeing that comforting presence really serves to anchor him going forward. Uncle Benjamin. They've got this weird sort of mystical connection. They're both figures who aren't clearly just a regular 
warrior or normal human. You are the three-eyed raven now. We know what we've got to do. I didn't have time to learn. I can't control anything. There's an element of mystery around Bran's future. This is happening much, much more rapidly than he thought it was going to happen. And he doesn't really know what it all means. He doesn't know what to make of it all. He will find his way to the world of men. And when he does, you will be ready. First of all, this 747 insane dragon flies in, which CGI will make great. It's massive and it goes above them and then circles around and lands and dust flies and i think it was one of my ad's that said you know the horses can be stirring having the horses active in the scene charge the scene with a certain amount of chaos and energy i have a new book Woo! exciting he's an electric doing what it wants kind of buck I just literally get to react to what they're doing. She was amazing. At the end of the scene, you should be somewhat roused by her and a little horrified. She's not Hitler at Nuremberg, but she's got the power.